So I'm, I'm fortunate that I have a, a diverse amount of liquid assets. I have equities, I have cash, I, I have all, you know, I have Bitcoin, I have gold, um, I have all sorts of assets. So for me, you know, a lot of it would probably be a good chunk of it would be in cash for a two year period, but I would, you know, in, in treasury bonds, probably like T-bills. Um, but I would also probably diversify that into, into you know, kind of lower beta equities, um, things like that, right? So I wouldn't have too much cash exposure at any one time. How should you keep your wealth during the time when assets are losing value? Whether you have accumulated wealth or have saved some money, you need to think about how you will store it. People usually don't think about converting their wealth into diverse asset classes, but Lane Alden, the founder of Lynn Alden Investment Strategy, certainly cares about her wealth. She has the best technique for anyone who wants to keep their wealth safe. With time, cash and assets can lose value, or the market conditions can fluctuate the total worth of the assets. Lynn Alder knows that, which is why she has converted her wealth into a diverse class of assets. But what are they, and why does she consider them the best? Welcome back to Metaverse Economy, a channel where we bring crypto and investment insights that you won't know anywhere else. If you are someone who wants to keep on the surface during these uncertain times, you will find helpful videos here. In this video, we are going to tell you what assets Lynn Alden has invested in and why. Let's get started. Yeah, for me, I think I think Bitcoin's the innovation. Um, I think that most other assets in the space, what they do is they sacrifice some degree of decentralization to try to do something else. They try to make it faster or more expressive. Uh, and, you know, some of those are interesting experiments. But um, I, I think I think Bitcoin remains kind of the, the key innovation in that space. Obviously, you have to be careful about position sizing, volatility, things like that. Uh, but I, I do think that Bitcoin will, will have another bull cycle in the years ahead. Um, I don't know if you've seen the, the full low or not. It depends on the extent of this contagion. Um, but I would be very, very cautious about anything outside of the, of the Bitcoin. The first asset Lynn Alden has invested her wealth in is Bitcoin. Instead of other altcoins, she said she used the dollar cost averaging to invest in Bitcoin to reduce the price she bought. It's a method where one gradually buys Bitcoin instead of buying it once. Gradually, the price can increase and you can own Bitcoins where you put less money to have that number of coins. But if you had to buy it at once, you would have to pay more. The reason Lynn Alden gave to choose Bitcoin is its principles of decentralization. She said that all other cryptocurrencies compromise on decentralization to either improve performance or strengthen security. They don't care about decentralization which impacts individual investors. However, Bitcoin doesn't do so. It uses superior technology and never compromises on decentralization, ensuring that this cryptocurrency stays valuable forever. She said she no doubt has to care about volatility and ensure long-term investment. But she thinks a pull cycle will come for Bitcoin in the years ahead, which will pay off the investors. She said categorically that no other cryptocurrency can be trusted except for Bitcoin. Here's a little reminder to like the video if you are loving it. And if you don't want to miss videos about proven investment and the crypto market, subscribe to our channel. Let's continue now. So mainly the two biggest variables are US and Chinese policy, right? So the US has been drawing down the strategic petroleum reserve um, and that's, you know, that's quelled some of the supply side shortages uh, in energy markets. So I think that the, the number one context is that there's not a lot of spare capacity, right? OPEC does not have a lot of spare capacity. Uh, you know, shale can only grow so quickly. We might start see starting to see some Russian uh, energy come off the market uh, in the years ahead. Um, and there's still strong growth from, you know, emerging market energy consumption perspective, right? India still wants more energy every year. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's kind of a supply side issue. And then there's, you know, we can only draw down the strategic petroleum reserve for so long. Uh, I think we're probably getting towards the end of that cycle. Uh, and so that can put upward pressure on prices. And then number two is, is China, right? So if you look at, at Chinese um, retail consumption, construction activity over the past two, three years, it's been, it's been very stagnant. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's partially due to the, the just the unending rolling lockdowns they keep doing. And it's also due to uh, kind of a planned demolition of excessive leverage in the real estate market. Uh, they have kind of a, a top down plan to rein some of that in that, you know, they go through cycles, but this one's been particularly um, austere in that in that area. So the combination of, of deleveraging and uh, these these lockdown procedures are reducing overall Chinese energy consumption compared to the prior trend compared to the baseline. So if they ever if they ever reverse those policies, if they do more stimulus, if they do more reopening and stay stay open, that's a you know that's an uptick in, in energy demand, uh, oil demand. Uh, and so I think those are the variables to watch. Right now, it, there's kind of both tight supply and demand destruction, uh, just from you know Fed tightening policy, Chinese lockdowns, and if those you know in the next 
couple of years if if, though, if that turned into the next upswing. Uh, that's where I'd be pretty concerned about higher energy. Lynn Alden said that energy prices would increase in the next few months, which is why she has invested in the energy sector. Since the U.S. is plummeting its oil supply to the global world, an imperceptible decline in energy is in the process, but countries cannot feel the difference right now. Asian countries like India and Japan need a massive amount of energy to carry on production, even if China is still in lockdown. On one side, the U.S. is declining the supply, while on the other, the demand is increasing. This will result in increased energy prices in the end. Plus, China is seeing lockdowns now. But that doesn't mean this will always be the case. The time will come when lockdowns will be wiped away, and the zero-COVID policy will no longer exist. That will be when China will demand tremendous energy from the major energy suppliers. Immediately, the energy prices will shoot, becoming a source of profit for those who have invested in the energy sector. She also said she has planned to invest in the energy sector for the long term, perhaps for five years. That's when the energy sector will bring massive profits. Since we are talking about preserving wealth, one can afford to keep their money invested for about five years without touching it. So I'm, I'm structurally long energy, so I, I try not to trade it too much. Uh, I, I just, you know, I own a number of energy producers, I own pipelines. I plan on holding them for you know, probably five years or more. Uh, then comes Lynn Alden's defensive investment options. One of them is the healthcare sector because it's not too sensitive. People still need healthcare even if there is a news about recession, making it a good defensive asset to invest in. Lynn Alden said the healthcare sector has surfaced as a profitable dividend-paying asset group. However, the returns from healthcare are not the same as one can have from the energy sector. The main reason for choosing healthcare is to have a safe option that can buffer the declines in other assets. She said that she holds some healthcare stocks in her portfolio, which she has held for years. Even today, those seem attractive and offer good dividends, becoming a good investment option if one wants a defensive asset. This year, right? So that, you know, they haven't been as strong performers as energy, uh, but they've been among um, you know, the, the better performers in the market. And that's because they, they came into this year with reasonable valuations, uh, decent dividends in many cases, uh, and they're not very economically sensitive. Uh, you know, people still consume healthcare in a, in a recession. Um, and so, you know, I think of when you eventually get a more risk on type of sentiment, uh, those could lag behind, you know, some of this trend could reverse. Uh, but I have a number of healthcare stocks as part of the portfolio, and I, 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 I still view them as being reasonably attractive at this time. So for me, defensive is things like pipelines, healthcare, uh, cash, gold, that sort of thing. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm optimistic on, on things like industrials as well, defense contractors, unfortunately, uh, given the, the state of the world. Um, so I, I do think that there are more cyclical things that you can invest in as well. Um, I think copper is interesting long-term. I think there are a number of places that are interesting long-term. And then comes the most reliable asset, gold. Gold has been there for centuries, and it will be there for even many centuries to come. Len Alden isn't the only one who thinks gold should be an asset one should hold. Various investors have deemed gold a valuable asset that will never make you panic. No matter what happens in the market, it's an asset whose price will increase in the long term. So what you basically have to do is to buy gold and hold it. Then you can go to work or vacation without worrying about what's happening in the market. You have gold in your safe, which you can see and touch. That's not something like stocks which will lose value and you would not get anything. Gold can never lose value, and its market can never crash because that has never happened in history. But how will you invest in gold? Lynn Alden said that she has invested in physical gold. Simply put, that's the gold you buy and take you home. Instead of buying the positions, you buy the actual gold you can touch and see. However, she said that she had balanced it with the gold royalties, but the physical gold is in the majority. She has chosen gold as a defensive position, which is the right strategy when there is no certainty, and when the stock market can crash at any time, gold can never do such things. So I, I use the majority of it for physical. Uh, I use it primarily as a defensive asset, uh, as a as a bear asset store of value. Uh, but I also go into you know because I, I don't I don't focus on the small caps. I don't you know I don't have a background in geology or or it's not it's not an industry that I go deep on right. So I, I focus on the larger players. I focus on the royalty companies. Yeah. Um, one thing to be mindful of is if you are bullish on energy, uh, that's a significant cost for the miners. Um, but it's not really a cost for the royalty companies. So for example, if someone has an expectation where they expect oil to, uh, uh, gold to go high, but not energy, then the miners would be very well positioned. You get them at lower valuations, uh, that's pretty attractive. If you expect both gold and energy to go up, then the ones that don't have their costs affected, the royalty companies would probably be better positioned. But of course, you're paying a much higher valuation uh, for that view. And so I like, I like a mix of both. Uh, overall, I, I, I kind of, you know, I overweight the royalty companies, but I still have enough.
Do you agree with Lynn Alden to invest in gold, Bitcoin, healthcare and gold to preserve wealth? Or would you select some other assets like stocks or other cryptocurrencies? Comment your opinions in the comment section right below. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, then please like and share the video and subscribe to the Metaverse Economy for more videos about the crypto market and investment insights. Until the next video, stay tuned.